this. So maternal care is top of the agenda in Bristol today, but a quarter of a century ago, the focus was on new research that would go on to save hundreds of babies from cot death. Yes, the journalist and broadcaster Anne Diamond has made a film for Points West about the issue that was claiming thousands of lives. Anne, who started her TV career here at Points West, has been reunited with the doctor whose work helped to reduce the number of cot deaths. Here is Anne Diamond. <laughs> It's funny because um, I'm not a West Country girl, but I've come back to Bristol several times in my life. I wanted to come first of all to go to the university to do English and drama, but I didn't get in. Then I came back um, for all, one, one of the best jobs in the world, which was to learn the television business at Points West. And then, so cruelly ironical in a way, when my little boy died of cot death in 1991, to find out that actually the most pioneering work of all was being done here in Bristol by a really remarkable man called Professor Peter Fleming. Sebastian was born in March 1991. He was my third son after Oliver, here on the right, who was three, and James, a two-year-old. One bright sunny morning in July, I found him dead in his cot. I'd put Sebastian to sleep on his front, which was the government's official guidance since the early 70s. What I didn't know was that advice had been literally overturned in Avon because local health visitors and GPs were so impressed by Peter Fleming's new research. If we can understand some of the processes involved, we'll be a long way towards being able to prevent some of these babies dying. He had discovered that lying an infant to sleep on its front could increase the risk of cot death. But nobody else seemed to be listening. The government and many medics were sceptical about his findings. And my role became obvious. If, if your baby is at the age where it naturally wants to roll onto um, a different position, onto its tummy or side... Or As a high-profile journalist, I knew I had to get the government to create a campaign out of Peter's pioneering research. But it was a huge battle. That all seems a long time ago now, but Peter is still working at St Michael's Hospital. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm lovely Hi. to see you again. Oh, God. At the time, it seemed that everybody was so sceptical about something you knew was going to work. Yeah, I mean, I understand that, because we felt sceptical about it. I couldn't believe that this could, anything could be that simple. Um, I went on the Jimmy Young show and, and was trying to push this and say, look, we've, this is a really important finding. The following day, the Times published a full-page headline accusing me of being irresponsible but a group of doctors in London thought that what we were doing was dangerous and irresponsible and that I should be uh, sort of reprimanded for making such irresponsible statements. Eventually we won our battle and four months after Sebastian's death the government changed its official guidance advising parents to put their babies to sleep on their backs. Cot death is comparatively rare, but there are few things more tragic. The campaign is credited with saving the lives of more than 20,000 babies in the UK. It's amazing to think that 25 years ago all this extraordinary work was being done in Bristol. But what is even more amazing is to find that Peter is still here and he's still doing the most amazing work, which could get that death rate down even lower. And you only have to meet the man to know that he's just never going to stop until he can do that. Well, that was uh, Anne Diamond, and Anne was speaking to us as part of our Diamond anniversary uh, celebrations, if you like, because this programme is 60 years old and we're looking back through the archives and uh, revisiting uh, stories that we did some years ago. Mm, and we were very pleased when, uh, earlier today, Anne joined us in the studio together with Professor Fleming. So we started by asking her what it was like to talk about Sebastian's death again. Well, I'm sure Peter would agree with me because he's met so many mums like me. You, you, it's not a question of ever returning to it. It's never, it never leaves you. Um, Sebastian, and, and that's not to sound maudlin or anything, but Sebastian's death 
is part of my life. Uh, his life as well is part of my life. Um, and his absence is still there. Um, I, I'm not saying I sort of get tearful about it every single day, but just watching that, uh, that film can, can bring it right back. Yes, it can... But it n never leaves you. It's just part of me now. No, of course it doesn't. But it, you, he would have been 26 now. I but know. Just Isn't looking that at that, it brought a tear to my eye. That indirectly, he helped to save 20,000 babies. He did his bit. Yes, he did. Yeah. This man did most of it work. But, <laughs> yeah, he did. And it makes me very, very proud of him, actually. Yeah, quite right. Mm. Professor, cot death is still happening, but right. fortunately at much lower rates than it was. But where are we now? OK, I mean... Back at the time that this work was going on, uh, nearly 2,000 babies were dying every year in the UK, suddenly and unexpectedly as cot deaths. The work we've been doing, the changes we've, we've, implied, we've managed to develop over the last few years have reduced that. It's now about 200, so 90% reduction, but 200 families still have to go through that awful mm. experience every mm. year. And I'm told um, that, I think you agree, don't you, the, the Back to Sleep campaign is still the single most successful health campaign there has ever been That's in incredible. this country. Yeah. Do you feel any animosity to the fact that you had to fight so hard for it, though, and you were being lambasted? You talked in the piece about the Times, the headline, and so on. No, I don't feel... And I, don't, I, I feel, in a sense... Uh, validated you know we, yeah. we had some ideas we thought they might work and in fact they did um, and quite correctly it's not appropriate for people to start making outrageous claims and thinking they can change things if they don't have good evidence so yes I'm, I don't object to the fact we were subjected to very very careful scrutiny it does make you think though you know, what were people thinking of? Because I put my babies down on their front and it always felt wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a sense I know, of I remember doing it with my first best. two yep. and my mum saying, oh, I'd never do that. I would never do that. And me sort of being very, very self-important mm -hmm. young mum <laughs> saying, well, that's how we're taught nowadays. Yeah. This is the yep. right way to do it. Yep. There is no culture on earth that routinely puts their babies down to sleep on the front. Mm. And briefly, Peter, you are still on the case and, uh, you know, hoping to eradicate cot death altogether. Our current project is a very exciting one. We've identified that within the routine hearing screening that every baby gets now, if we look at the waveform that's recorded in a different way, not just to look for hearing, but actually to analyse the waveform in a more complicated way, it looks possible that we may be able to identify those babies with something going wrong in the back part of the brain, the brainstem. Um, and it looks possible that we might be able to predict the babies who are at risk of dying. So we're currently trying to recruit families Families who've had a baby or a young child die suddenly in the last few years, we would like them to come forward to the Lullaby Trust in London to let them know so we can collect that information and go back and look at their recordings. Very interesting. Thank and once you. again, you're thinking out of the box. Good luck. Um, yeah, I hope it, uh, it does lead to something really positive. And thank you, Anne, for coming yes, back uh, um, home. Yeah, this is where I started my broadcasting uh, career. It's I bet you wish you'd stayed now. Absolutely. It's really <laughs> nice here. And I love the revolving diamond. <laughs> we laid it all. Just for special. me. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Thank you.